this movie is complete and utter trash. But you should still check it out. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1976 to look at, well, it is what it is. We are talking about Bobby Joe and the Outlaw. Oh, Wonder Woman herself. But before we go any further, before we dig into all the little details of this little flick, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. They write ballads about girls like Bobby Joe, the loving kind. Loving a man so strong, nothing he does could ever be wrong. The pinball kid who made a name for himself and then had to live up to it. Come on, lover boy, move it. Bobby Joe and the outlaw, they were country kids. All they wanted to do was hit the road. But the country rose up and smacked them in the face. All right, boys, if you don't come out in three seconds, we're going to let them have it. Why, I'll make love to me tonight. He knows what's going to happen, just like I know what's going to happen. Stay loaded and ready to go. Just squeeze the trigger if you have to. Emma Dalton said, they made me a criminal. I wanted to get killed in one hell-firing minute of smoke and action. Promise, Bank. Hey, y'all just remain in your respectable positions and we take care of business. Bobby Joe, get her on the chair. Sit right down, darling. Don't worry. It's all right. Now, don't be scared. No one's gonna hurt you. Get out of here. Bobby Joe, who latched onto a whirlwind and couldn't let go. Okay, this debacle, I mean, Gem, was directed by Mark Lester. He did a whole bunch of little low-budget flicks you're going to remember. We're talking about he did stunts. He did Roller Boogie and Commando. Come on, everybody knows that. And Firestarter and Class of 1999 and Armed and Dangerous and Showdown in Little Tokyo. Come on, Brandon friggin' Lee and Truck Stop Women and Night of the Running Man and Double Take. So... Just by listening to that, you kind of know where you're going to go in this, but we'll get there. Okay, playing Lyle Wheeler, the one, the only, the living legend himself, Marjo Gortner. Let's go. We're talking about he's been crazy little shit like Earthquake and Acapulco Gold and Star Crash. Come on. We all remember that. And When You Coming Back, Red Rider and Viva Knievel and Mausoleum and TV shows like Falcon Crest and TJ Hooker. And for me, I will always remember the Marjo Gordner for one motion picture and one motion picture only. And that is Food of the Gods. Yeah. Playing Bobby Joe Baker. And really, the only reason you're going to watch this motion picture, Linda Carter. Big TV career, folks. Let's do this. We're talking about she was in stuff like Starsky and Hutch, Partners in Crime, and Hawkeye, and Smallville, and Supergirl, and Hope and Faith, and a bunch of TV movies and stuff like that. But let's face reality. She is, and always will be, Wonder Woman from that wonderful little show in the 70s. And she will always be the Wonder Woman. And come on, let's face it, some of her runs on Battle of the Network Stars, ha, they made you tune in too. Playing Slick Callahan, the one, the only B-movie legend, Jesse Vint. Let's do this. We're talking about he's been little things like Bug, which you know I already did, and Earthquake, and Chinatown, and Macon County Line, and Silent Running, and TV, a lot of TV, FBI, Cannon, Emergency, Centennial, Chips, T.J. Hooker, heart to heart. Jesse Vint, not a face that's going to jump out on a lot of people, but legend in his own little way. Playing Magic Ray in a small role in this, but I got to always mention this dude. We're talking the one and only Garrett Graham. Fucking kidding me? Garrett Graham. 
Let's go. We're talking about he was in stuff like Phantom of the Paradise and Child's Play 2 and Demon Seed and The Return slash Son of the Blob and Chopping Mall and Terror Vision and The Annihilators and Rat Boy and home movies and shitloads of TV shows. And of course, he was in easily one of the top five comedies ever made in the history of mankind. Used cars. It's a red car, Rudy. It's a red fucking car. Play Essie. Belinda Belaski. Uh, you might say yourself, fucking who? But let's look into this. We're talking she was in Small Soldiers. We're talking she was in The Howling. Come on, you got to remember from The Howling. And Gremlins. And Gremlins 2. And Cannonball. You remember that old flick with the Caradine? And The Food of the Gods. Yep. Right with Marjo himself. And TV. You know, Falcon Crest and Hunter. And of course, she was in the motion picture. Parade. So, been around, might recognize her face, if not the name, it is what it is. And there's some other names and some other faces in this thing, too. I'm just going to cover them quick. We're talking to people like Peggy Stewart, who was in stuff like Dead Man's Gold and Ride, Rider, Ride, Ride, and TV like Quincy and Days of Our Lives and Matt Houston and Mary Lynn Ross, who was in stuff like, you know, Class of 84 and, you know, White House Madness and School Girls in Chains, you're not General Hospital. And Gene Drew, who was not in really big stuff or anything like that, you know what I mean? He was in, like, Sweet Georgia and Truck Stop Women. He's only in a few movies, but they were the true fucking shit grindhouse of the grindhouse. So he deserves some mention for that. Anyway, maybe you can keep an eye out. Maybe you'll see some other people pop up. Who knows? But let's get going with the story. All right, everybody, I'm going to do this in 90 seconds or less. Keep it short, keep it fast, keep it entertaining, keep it moving so we can get to it much rather be. The summation. The movie starts out, you got this guy, Lyle Wheeler. Apparently, he's like a quick draw champion. And he goes around making some cash in quick draw contests. And he likes to do some other stuff, too, like steal cars. And he does it right in the beginning of this motion picture. He steals himself a brand new badass Mustang. Goes traipsing down the road where he is quickly chased down by the police. But... He runs the police officer off the road, and in true Lyle Wheeler fashion, he shoots the police officer a wave and a salute, making sure he's okay before he drives away. To show you that Lyle Wheeler's a bad guy, but he ain't really a bad guy. Well, before you know it, he pulls into this little drive-in eatery where one of the waitresses happens to be one Bobby Joe Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, whoever cares. It is what it is. And he's kind of like stalking her, asking other waitresses around her. He's kind of like being like a sleechy, pervy guy who just starts stalking her, driving around after and actually follows her back to her home. Well, Linda Carter goes home, gets an argument with her mom, hops out and just arbitrarily hops in the car with this stranger who's stalking her. Hey, who would have known? Before you know it, they're in love and they're having a great time. And her little friend from the car hop place, well, she just starts tagging along with them. Who knows? Before you know it, they're doing funny little things. They're hanging out together. They're sitting there in hot mud baths, taking mushrooms. I'm not joking, this is what really happens. Until one day they get chased by a police officer and the girls find out that that car is stolen. Holy shit. They don't really care though. It is what it is. So Bobby Joe says, hey, listen, I know so we can get us out of trouble. I know how we can get out of this. We can go see my sister, who's a stripper with a sleazy boyfriend. They're going to help us. They go meet up with that. Eh, within 10 minutes, the sleazy boyfriend of the stripper, hmm, he goes off and robs the place. Lyle didn't know what was going to happen, but Lyle jumps into it and shoots the security guard, and now they are all wanted for murder. They're running, they're running from the police. They're going here, they're going there. But little Essie, you know, the tag along front from the car hop place, she's like, let's just turn ourselves in. And when she calls the sheriff to turn themselves in, she gets gunned down herself. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, now, Bobby Joe, Lyle, and the other two, well, they're pretty pissed off about this. So now they're off on a vendetta to get back at that evil Sheriff Hicks for the death or murder, call it what you will, of their little friend, Essie. That's about it, folks. I mean, this movie doesn't really need much explanation. Girl arguing with her mom, hooks up with a scumbag thief. Before you know it, she gets wrapped up in the life. She's having herself a time. Maybe she's a little crazier than he is. We'll find out. They team up with a couple other idiots, and before you know it, they just run around doing some Bonnie and Clyde shit, and friends die, whatever. You get the idea. This, it's, fuck, it is what it is. Okay, everybody, here's the question. Does Bobby Joe in The Outlaw work? Really, no. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever said that so blatantly about any motion picture in the history of all this channel that I've been doing all this reviewing on. 
it doesn't really work because the movie makes no sense whatsoever. But I'm not saying you shouldn't check it out. We'll get to that. First off, the directing. The directing is what it is. The problem really isn't even the directing, even though it's kind of shitty. But Mark Lester isn't bad at framing some shots and doing some stuff. The editing in this movie, which we will get to, is the shit of legend. I don't mean it's bad. I mean it's atrocious. It's horrible and it's horrific. And we will get there. The writing? Come on. I mean, come on. This is as grindhouse as it gets. Don't expect great writing. Don't expect any kind of miracle lines pouring out people's faces. It is what it is. If you can watch this kind of shit, you can watch it plain and simple. And finally, the acting. Oh, my God. All right, all right, all right. Jesse Vint's kind of cool because he's Jesse Vint. We kind of dig that. And Marjo turns into a Marjo performance. You know, he's Marjo in just about every goddamn movie he's in. It's a Marjo performance. We can roll with that. Man, the rest of it is pretty pretty bad. I mean, Linda Carter, my God, stunning to look at, but Jesus, God Almighty, not a whole lot of acting ability. Let's just be plain and simple. And a lot of the other cast look like they're going through the motions. Even Garrett Graham looks like he's kind of fucking bored. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Don't expect any great acting in this. Actually, expect kind of shit acting in this, really, just to, to be honest. But it gives you a headline of where we're going. Now, before I get to the obvious reasons, or the two obvious reasons, why you would want to watch this motion picture and why everybody does want to watch this motion picture. Let's get to going on what this motion picture lacks. Or basically, what's wrong with this motion picture. The problem with this flick is it does not have a story that is cohesive and meaningful in any kind of way. As you watch this motion picture, you are going to swear that this motion picture, before they chop it down to an hour and 28 minutes, or whatever it is, used to actually be like an hour and 50 minutes. And somehow, they lobbed out chunks and left you with the motion picture you're left with. Because nothing lines up. Nothing makes any sense. And sometimes it's so bad and so egregious, I swear to you, I promise you, there's going to be points of this movie where you go, what the fuck? What? How did we, what? And then there's going to be points where you just break up laughing. Because it's so bad, it's so stupid, you're just going to sit there and say, how did we get here? Beyond the fact that you have Bobby Joe who just hops in a car with this wing ding, okay, we can handle that. You know, Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry, they kind of do the same thing. But, in here, none of it makes any sense. It looks like everything's taken place within like a two-day period. It, it looks that way. But there's things that are glaringly odd. She hops in a car with this guy, and then two seconds later, they're walking arm in arm through like this, I don't know, Pueblo, whatever, I don't know what the hell you want to call it, out in the desert. And they're hanging out together, looking in love, and you're like, she's wearing a different shirt. Is it the same day? It looks like it's the same day. They presented it the same day. It's coming off as the same day. But what's going on? 20 minutes after that, they're banging like crazy out in the middle of the fucking desert. The very next day, they pick up her friend, and he's kind of like, oh, I don't want her hanging around. But she says, but I want her to hang around. He's like, okay. And then everything changes. And then a few minutes later, he's playing pool, and the friend walks into the room like she hasn't seen them in weeks. She's like, oh, my God. I come up to you guys. Oh, my God. And you're like, did I miss something? Is something going wrong? This motion picture is loaded with shit like that. It happens left and right. After Essie gets gunned down by the cops, you see them all hanging out and they're like, we're gonna avenge her, we're gonna do this Bonnie and Clyde shit, we're gonna go get that sheriff, but we need guns. We need to go get guns, because one guy's got a cowboy gun, single action colt, and the other guy's got a snubby 38. And that's all that they have. And they're sitting there saying, we need firepower to take on this sheriff. We need firepower. And in the next scene, they're all practicing, I mean, literally the next scene, with M16s by this old abandoned house. And you're like, okay, we missed, we missed how they got the M16s. I guess they're not going to show it. But then they use the M16s to rob a gun store. And you're like, what the fuck is go Nothing makes any sense. There's a great scene where they're at a roadblock. And they have to get by the police. So everybody goes through in this school bus. And they pretend that they're hippies. And they all get through. They could have drove off. But Lyle comes through, and he runs their fucking roadblock and gets every cop chasing him. Instead of going around the bus and just keep going, everybody gets off the bus, blowing their cover, and hops in the car. And you're like, why would you? That's what I mean about this motion picture. Nothing makes any sense. The scenes are completely chopped together in a kind of weird, there's something missing fashion. There's parts where the editing is so bad, it looks like they took some scenes that should have happened over in this time frame and dropped them into that time frame, and nothing makes a cohesive story. The whole thing with them doing mushrooms in the middle of the, that, that 
I don't know, hot pool or whatever the fuck they're in with the Native American guy comes out of nowhere and leaves out of nowhere. You're like, how, wait, wait, what, what, what? This motion picture is that motion picture. Makes no sense. There's no logical fucking correlation to anything going on. You feel like there's constantly pieces missed out and it is stupid. And let's face reality too. It's one of those things that if like you want to see great grindhouse, great car chases, great everything, you go see Dirty Mary Crazy Larry. That's like the Arthur Fonzarelli of that kind of shit. This movie isn't even the Chachi Arcola. I don't even th I don't even know if it's the Potsy. So at the end of all that, why would you want to watch this motion picture? Well, there's two reasons, two big ones, and we'll get to those in a second. The first. It does have some of that 70s nostalgia. Let's be honest. You know, there's some of the cars in it from the 70s, although the car chases are horrific and lame and boring and stupid. And there's things that take place in them that you're like, this makes no sense. Like when they block the road with the bus and the cops can easily drive around it and then they just drive their cars into it just to have a stunt in the movie. But it makes no sense. Mm, yeah. There's gunfights and shootouts and bank robberies, but they're all kind of cheesy and stupid and kind of goofy. But for Grindhouse, they work. And then there's the other reason to watch this motion picture. And let's not bullshit each other. Everybody wanted to see this motion picture simply because Linda Carter, yes, our beloved Wonder Woman, does at least four nude scenes in this thing. One looks like it came from one nude scene that they chopped it up and showed it a couple of times in the flick. But let's face it, Wonder Woman shows the Wonder Globes. And that's the main attraction of this motion picture literally. And if it's not her, it's it's Essie or it's some couple strippers in a the bar. There is literally all the criteria for Grindhouse. Car chases, gunfights, and boobs. And at least on the boobs, it delivers in a big way. The other two are there, but they're just done in a subpar manner. And that's what makes this motion picture legendary. Linda Carter, topless, some gunfights, some car chases, a few other copless chicks, like the chick from the Howling of Piranha and stuff like that. That is the attraction of this motion picture. That's what makes this movie legendary, apart from the side that it's like legendarily badly done. All right, folks, be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Be kind to a friend. Be polite to a stranger. But above all, under no circumstances ever, ever take any bullshit from anybody. Talk to you soon.